All right. So here we are. 2014 Hurley Pro at Trestles, round one. Get to open up with some Chippa Wilson ad. It's pretty cool. Do you know Chip very well, Tanner? Uh, actually, I, I know him pretty well. Like, we don't catch up on the phone, but every time we see each other, he, dude, the guy's such a good dude. Are you he seems like such a good guy. Who we got stumbling up the rocks here. That's the perfect way to start this clip right here. <laughs> How many right, times right. have we World's done that? World's best surfer just stumbling around. That looks like Rayoni Montero. Oh, it is. Oh, my oh, gosh. Look at Matt Wilkinson. Dude, why are we with our shirts off? This is concerning for everybody. Yeah. That's a rugged call. But yeah, so there we go. Bam. Matt Wilkinson's 22nd. Kelly's second. So how do you how do you approach like a heat again? Like, so you're your wild card. You're in it. What are you out to prove? Like, and how do you approach like round one against someone like Kelly and Matt? Well... This is a really interesting thing because Wilkinson, is this, I'm trying to think, I'm just jogging through memory here. Is This isn't the year that Wilco was in the title race at this moment. No, this is before he went on his rampage, but like we, we knew he had really deadly weapons, right? Like you'd seen him, like we knew he was a bit of a freak. Like he had a lot. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean the first time, so I've known Matt for a long time. The first time I saw him surfing was when we were 16 at the ISA Worlds in Tahiti. And he won that event. And I had never, to that point, I had never known of Matt Wilkinson. And he surfed freakishly good for his age. He had way more style and flow and form. And so Wilco's like, I mean, what he's done even outside of the jersey with rodeos, airs, mm. laybacks, he was a freakishly good dude. So, so good. yeah, of course, like you're saying, like this heat right here with Wilco and Slater, that's a, I mean, I would be looking at that like a huge heat. Well, and Kelly, he's three years from his 2011 world title. He finished runner-up in 2012 to Joel, finished runner-up again 2013 to Mick. So he's still very much a contender in everyone's mind. I mean, you could even say Kelly's still a contender as he's going to step up. Well, I was going to ask if you still think he is in 2020. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I mean, he's so, like, nowadays I would say in the performance level, guys like Italo, and Philippe and, and Gabby, they're setting new levels of performance surfing, but Kelly's wave knowledge, his ability to just have good form on his board and his barrel riding is still at the top level. And it's freakish. So it's these, this opening set with no priority, like, are you a guy that's like, I have to get the first wave or like, I'm just going to hang back and wait? Like, how do you kind of approach this? How, what was your head like right now? Yeah. I mean, shoot, like every day is different out there, but I'm, um, it looks like Kelly. I mean, Kelly, that's the thing about, that's what's so fun about surfing against Kelly out mm. here. He has <laughs> more, really literally more local knowledge than I do. So I take him <laughs> as he does. Dude. Like, I mean, he's surfed it more than I have, more than likely. And um, he surfs it just like ruthlessly. You know, he, there is, I would oh, say the way I always looked at it in, at lowers is that you'll probably oh. get about like 15, seven fives to come through. But there's yeah. always like two or three eight fives and nines in a specific heat. And you just kind of got to watch it for a long time and say like, which one of these waves looks like it is easier to surf. Right. And so that opening wave for you, like, what you know, how, are you just kind of getting your feet in the wax? Like at some point you're like, this isn't going to be a score, but I'm just going to kind of put it on rail a little bit and just kind of push the board and get comfortable. Yeah. Is, that, is that how you approach that? I've always, always, if I put a jersey on, I'm always the guy that likes to catch a wave early in the heat because I've never mm. really been good at sitting and feet being patient. Um, this is a Kelly replay here. Yes, dude, this is so this cool. Is We're going to like pseudo commentate Left. this thing. Well, no, like half commentate, right? Oh my God. Like, what is, how good was Kelly on those? See, he, because he'd left Quicksilver. Remember, he had like, he, he'd said goodbye to Quicksilver at Margaret River that year, but he hadn't left Channel Islands yet because remember, he, he went. He ended up splitting from them and buying Firewire. And you and him rode for. You still ride for Channel Islands. Um, what was that kind of like when when he decided to leave? Was it was it weird for you? Did it did you not care? Like what was that like? Well, I think. I mean, it was a big part of me wanting to be at Channel Islands. I'd mm. say that for sure. Like I think growing up, that momentum generation, a lot of the guys were on Channel Islands surfboards. So being from California and it's here. You know, I think it was always looked at in my eyes as the most prestigious brand. I still see it the same way. You know, I, I respect Kelly for what he did. Mm. It's all good. But I just, I mean, it's, I just, I still just dream about these t 
type of clips that we're watching Kelly on these boards, like this might be the year, the Vulcan pro where he rode that epoxy forefin. Mm. You remember mm. that? Those backside yeah. turns were out of control. Oh, for sure. Oh, Kelly. Here's another right. Oh, yeah. His flow, his form, he's able to get so much power and drive. And it's kind of exactly like we were talking about with Mick. Then he'll like swoop some crazy long line yeah, and then he'll yeah. just rip it, like poke it. Yeah, he just, and this wasn't even like, this is kind of a mid-sized one. Like he just kind of had a nice line and he's just, I mean, he's 42 here. Ah, I mean, he's just. I'm sorry. He's 42 got so many weapons, right? Like, what's what's that? that? He just fully blue tail to an air reverse at the end of that wave. Yeah, just ho hum. Like he's he just he's got all these weapons. I, that looks like it's like a EPS board with carbon strips, maybe. I think it is. What are your thoughts on EPS? Yeah, I like it. EPS is more. Uh, I don't know the word moody. It's harder to find a consistent, good board with EPS. I'd say PU. You can maintain. You know, if you're going to get twenty boards, probably mm. the majority of those are going to feel the same. Whereas if you get twenty EPS, it won't. All of them aren't going to feel exactly the same. They have a lot of characteristics within the board. Um, but this board, Kelly, I always loved it when he wrote epoxies. And he really, I do have to say, over time, and he's stepped out of the box. He's ridden a lot of different stuff in heats, which is yeah. a big yeah. factor of confidence. Like, you know, you watch it and you think about guys who have iconically ridden different boards over time. And that puts you in a whole other realm, I'd say watching Tom Kern videos, like he's totally okay with longer, shorter, whatever. Reynolds, mm. you got to think back on that MTF heat in France and oh, the dumpster dive. I mean, we're watching lowers. The dumpster diver year was beyond game changing. I don't know what year that was. Yeah, yeah it's a can good, you I'm consult to remember because he, he ended up losing to Mick in the final. Yeah. But he was, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Like, I love it when I see the world's best, like, ride something a little different. Like, Kelly rode the wizard sleeve out at out at Gold Coast that year. It looked awesome. Um, oh, here's Joel Parkinson. We're not going to get to hear what he's saying. I would what, are your, what, are, yeah, yeah. what are your thoughts on Joel, like, as a surfer? And, and where does he rank for you in the, the broader pantheon of, like, Australians? I think, I mean, that guard, the three degrees guard was just, you, I mean, there's just no getting around the fact that the three of those guys, Dean Morrison, Mick Fanning, and Joel Parkinson, were s so fun to watch. Parko, of course, oh. it's like Dr. Smooth. Um, and you would always look forward to certain locations. You know, J-Bay, obviously. Um, Bells, of course. The Gold Coast, of course. And Lowers. Lowers was who always your, a spot. Who was your favorite if you had to pick one of the, the Cooley kids? I, I, I mean, I'm Mick not afraid. It's like I love them all, so I'm not talking any sort of smack here, but Mick Fanning is just like white lightning, just the way that he is both on his forehand and his backhand. And yeah, I mean, it's it, gnarly. When I was coming up, oh, when I was younger, anyway, coming up, <laughs> didn't end up anywhere. When, when I was younger, <laughs> um, Dean Morrison, like with the Volcom sticker and like the sun bleached hair and like, he was like, he was kind of the early JS writer. I remember getting like Australian magazines over in the U S and be like, who is this dude? He serves so well. And then I think he was in one of the early Jack Johnson films and like had a few waves kind of, um, I don't remember it was shelter maybe or something like that. And, uh, I was like, man, this guy shreds, like, who is he? And then you find out who he is. And he was I always really liked watching Dingo, but I'm the same. And even before I got to kind of know them professionally and personally, like they, they were just such culture shifting surfers. Yeah, and, and I wonder if the three of them together really made that impact. I mean, individually, you could argue that they would all have changed a game, you know, but the fact that they came from the same area, same age, and they surfed together, they hung together. It was like when they came down to lowers in the morning and surfed, it was just, it was radical. It was because we were the Groms growing up that would surf the contest site the, <laughs> before the contest, you know, so we saw... As you were walking down in the dark, Nathan Hedge was fully suited up riding a bicycle out of there. And that only led to the legend of Hedgy, where you knew he was the guy out there first in the water. And Mick Fanning, Dean Morrison, Parco, Davo, like Darren O'Rafferty, uh, Mick Campbell, of course, Mick Campbell, <laughs> Those like guys, the Ginger Ninja. Sure. Um, the Ginger Ninja. Oh, here we go. Kelly. 
Bam. Oh. He likes to stay busy. Like once he, I think that last wave came in at an eight and uh, it's, he likes to keep his foot on the gas when he's in the lead. I wonder if I, what do I do? And I actually completely forgot. Well, you've got about priority, I think, right? Do you like having priority or is you're just like, oh man, I wish I didn't have it because I'd just be catching a lot of waves? It depends. Like I would say everywhere, but lowers, I don't like having it, but at lowers, I do enjoy it. I think I know what I'm actually looking for at lowers. It's, and I guess, as you say before, sometimes there's like different swells where it's like, there's a lot of waves. Like I'd rather maybe not have it and just stay busy. But then, as you said before, like there are some swells where it's like, you know which waves are going to give you potential nines. So you're like, I don't want to not get a crack at one of those, especially if it's got those summer lulls happening. That's the chess factor of lowers that is so fun. You're out there, you know there could potentially be a better wave out the back. And you're going to let Kelly Slater go on the first one of a set. It's like, how do you do that? How do you let the greatest surfer <laughs> of all time have a, perfectly peeling right-hander because you know he's going to deliver and then have the confidence to sit out the back and and hope for the wave that you're looking for. So that was always kind of a fun little chess um, aspect of it. I'd say for me, the biggest actually event of learning at Lowers was the one I didn't do, which was the one I helped Dimity Stoyle. She, she uh, reached out to me to see if I'd help her with some lineups. And I was like, absolutely, I would love to. So we went, we surfed together, we broke it down. And then I would ride my bike down and watch every one of her heats and be in the booth or whatever and help her kind of get a game plan going. And it was light, but it was a little bit of guidance. And she got third that year. And I think it was definitely, I want to say one of her better results. And I noticed myself then creating a game plan. It's almost like when you know how to do something, you have to learn how to verbalize it to somebody else to actually understand what you know yeah you're wearing a different hat right so you're looking at it from a different perspective and yeah i can imagine that's that's hugely helpful oh stephen bell this was when he was still coaching kelly after the quicksilver split but i think everyone was like well he's still coaching him what like i've always wondered about like belly and i love him he, he i understand his value there but like like surf coaches, like, have you ever worked with one? I was wondering, like, what does a surf coach tell the best surfer in the world to do? Like, go off on the track, <laughs> Dude, think, Honestly, it's almost like sometimes I would imagine Kelly's just got to talk some things out and be in mm, there mm. so that you can put something onto the plate. And, you know, having somebody that you trust enough, Belly has been to all these locations for a really long oh, time. Here you go. You're up. So he would know good waves and bad waves. Mm. That Dave, did I just fall on my first turn or there? Like Gabby's like, I would have I would have torn the ball. Well, so and and this was the year. So Kelly was in second coming into Trestles, and he and Gabby just had that mental 2014 final at Chopes, and Gabby was in the front of the rankings. So yeah. He always wait a always second. Like, so Gabby's number one right here? Yeah, he is, yeah. Um because okay, so I think he took back. it so, in Tahiti and he never lost it. But he always he's so young there, right? He's 20 oh, KP snake, maybe. Look at Charlie's glasses. My goodness, dude. The yellow. Yellow. That's before the the yellow jersey, is it? I think this might have been the first year. I think I think he is running it at, at this at this stop. Um but he, he even before he won his titles, he always kind of carried himself with like that kind of confidence, you know, like you can kind of tell Gabby. early on. I mean the guy won two out of his first five CT events when he got on in 2011 at the mid-year point, right? Oh, yeah. Todd Nace. Oh my God, how good's Ace Bucking? Should I just He's all good, answer is if I'm Ace right here? Todd's Todd <laughs> <Klein. laughs> That means I gotta be Todd Klein. We're both goofy footers and I'm big in Japan, Ace, and you're big everywhere else. What do you think of that? Oh, <laughs> Todd. Well, <laughs> hmm, hmm, yeah. Good. Well, it's crazy that he's uh, no longer with Hurley. Did that did that surprise you? Ace is no longer with Hurley. No, he was one of the guys at the end of last year that that they parted ways, and he was like one of their first guys. You know, that's kind of the surf. Surfing is just in a really interesting spot right now. There's just a lot of different things happening. I'd say Hurley that week, that massacre week of who's on, oh, who's off, why is it happening, um, was rattling to watch that. Yeah. And he's so good. Like he's so good pretty much everywhere. Like he can win in beach breaks. He can, he's so good at chokes. He's yeah. 
And he's one of those guys too. Like I think Ace and I are about the same age. I'm I'm about to turn 37. And um, yeah, I admire know. like the way he's committed to like his fitness and his flexibility. And it seems like he's only gotten like stronger and better. And I'm like, okay, it's it's not over, Dave. Like you could <laughs> next week you could surf better than ever if you wanted. Start looking at Kelly, just, but just I stretch. totally I just totally stretch. agree. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, um, yeah, I think Ace got his, he got one of his highest results at the Wave Ranch this last year, right? He oh, yeah. I mean, I think that that Wave in particular, like guys of like a very high, like technical aptitude, like Ace, like or Kanoa, like guys like that surf it and girls surf it so well because it's just one of those ones you kind of have to have your technique down and be ready to rip. Totally. And have good form. Oh, we got a replay here because we missed it in real time here. Oh, Wilco on a sweet little honeysuckle, right? Yeah, Wilco's uh, backhand, backhand is, is just, there's so much f- swing. He gets so much, f- like, rotation out of everything. It's, he's got a wide stance, too. It's funny, because in that 2002 boost event, like, Luke wins, and Luke's, Luke's kind of got a narrow stance. Like, his knees are pretty close together. Oh, man. He's got him on rotation. You took the left, right? Dude, this is a crazy heat. <laughs> if I'm coming out on top of this, like, what did I do? <laughs> Stay tuned for the thrilling conclusion. <laughs> do what happens next? Here. Yeah. Oh, dude, you hammered that thing. What's that board you're writing? That so that was this that's a there's a funny story on that. There that is a off the oh, grid. Daner. Look at Dane Donis, dude. Line up podcast alumni. Wow. He is in the alum, isn't he? That's so fun. But yeah, that board was a rockered out, it's off a cheese stick. We cut off like three inches on both sides and then put a K-whip tail on it. And we were calling it the Shadow Fax because that's Gandalf's horse in Middle Earth. And every Naturally. time I ever did well at lowers, I was on one of those boards over the course of like three or four years. Oh. I would just reorder them. Wow. Are you kidding me, dude? Well, and so explain that to me and everyone else. Like, so if that board's the magic board, like how come the Shadow Fax doesn't become like a consumer facing model from CI? Well, I, I think it is cool at time. You know, of course, I wish it it did. That was also the board that I got the third in the CT. I don't know what year that was, a couple years after this um, and all those QS events. So over time, I started to think like this is a very good lowers board. Um, however, that's the cool thing about Channel Islands is it's a it's sort of a round table of everybody's decision making. And so if a model comes on and the team's like, hey, I'm not getting good boards off this or I am things can change. Like the Tilo on the opposite side of that, I rode and then Reynolds grabbed it and he made the final in France on it Mm -hmm. or got third. And that was like a humongous green light to the Tilo coming as a model. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. What board do you think Kelly's riding in this event? I think it's a Fred Rebel round pin. I know Mm. he was all over those. Yeah. Yeah. What's your favorite Kelly board? I mean, I have, I still have a wizard sleeve that I love. Like, really? Like, <laughs> like, when would you ride the wizard sleeve? Everywhere. I ride it like, I would ride it like as a quad at like overhead restaurants. And then I will ride it like in like little crappy whatever. Like, it, I, one board to rule them all, you know? Like, and I, that's the thing. Like, I, I remember Midget Smith shaped me like an EPS board in like, I don't know, 06, 07. And, I was like, that's it for me. I, I'm stronger, lighter. I don't get 20 boards a year. So I, you know, I'll just take these ones and like these quiver killers where I'm like, can I just take one board somewhere? Because when you work on tour, if the waves are good, you're probably working. Like you guys are out competing. And so we often just kind of like surf whatever. And, and the scraps are awesome. Like we get really good scraps, but you know, you can get by with kind of, you know, a, just a, a shorty that's like a real versatile shorty or even like a groveler fun guy. That's what I've noticed a, big thing coming off tour and transitioning away from contest is when you're doing contests, let's just use the guys on tour or let's just use Patrick as an example right now. So Pat's still doing the QS. He's really refining, tuning in on his fevers. Uh, his, like he has a Fred whip that he loves in small waves. So he has to, because at that level, you can't really sacrifice like riding other stuff. If you're missing the chance to get your, you know, Willy Wonka golden ticket off the QS to the CT. And you would almost be raking yourself over the coals if you did. But once you step away from it, you realize that you can ride a lot of different boards in a lot of different ways. And it just allows the freedom of expression. You know, I think like Dane was kind of tapping in on your guys' podcast, which is like, 
Mm. You mm. just want to do things differently than you have because you want to reconnect with that natural freedom that surfing gave you. Oh, yeah. I mean, and it's one of those things, too. It's like, I mean, not not every heat has the best waves on tour, but like they're all like really high quality waves. So sometimes riding that equipment doesn't necessarily translate to like surfing your local beach break. You're like, that's just I got that board, but like I don't <laughs> I can't do that. So, so yeah, you almost are afraid to pull the board out. You're you almost sometimes well, get and, a little yeah, scared. Of and, that. Yeah, and it's like maybe maybe your home break gets like world class, like you know, ten percent of the year. But if you're riding that other board, the other ninety percent, maybe the the comfort you have and the familiarity you have with that or that ninety percent board, you're you're better off just at that in those ten percent conditions. Oh, Ian Folk, he's like a Gadowskis adjacent brother. Look at too to the right of him is a Dur Letamendia from Pukas. He was staying with us during this event. It was always really fun when the event would come to town. People would just want to, they'd, they'd reach out and we had a lot of people staying at our house during it and everybody would just come down. And I, I want to say Patrick ended up beating Kelly the year after this, I think, man on man. And that was huge because we were down there watching that thing and then had a huge support crew. And it felt like it kind of goes back to your local wild card conversation where it brings its own entourage of people who are connecting with the event. And Stu Kennedy on the Gold Coast would be a great example. Adam Robertson at Bell's phenomenal yep. example. I mean, you 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 really can understand that the community wants to see the people in it do well when they're showing up on the beach and supporting. It's always fun watching it on the webcast, like seeing who is down there. Yeah. So you guys need scores right now. You got eight minutes left. What what's going through your brain? I have no. I mean, honestly, like, could you imagine? I'm almost probably at this point thinking Slater's got this thing in the bag. It's got 15 total. <laughs> You're relaxed. You're like, yeah, it's I'll get another crack at it in round two. <laughs> yeah, like, all right, cool. Stoked about round two, right, guys? What about what about the horror stories about Kelly's like mind games in the lineup? Did did he talk to you or do you talk to him? I actually so and and again, that's the best thing about those mind games is that you'll never know if they're true or not. But I was <laughs> saying that I surfed against Kelly on tour made me think about that exact moment where I was in Brazil. And when I was on tour at that time, it was just Patrick and I, we didn't really have a coach. So we would just travel to the events by ourselves and get psyched up for the heats and just kind of like, where are we at? What are we doing? And so Pat's like, just run down early. Cause you don't want to like, Kelly's going to try to do some trippy mind games, get out of here. And you just go down there, get in your zone. So I literally run like a half a mile down from the contest site where there's nobody on the beach. And I'm like, cool. But then I start doing that thing of where's Kelly at? So I'm looking back at the contest <laughs> and I, I don't even see him. I hear all this huge fr- frenzy of people like screaming. And there's like somehow bongo drums in my memories. And, and then he, Kelly war, just runs war drums, the, the drums in, of war. He runs the entire beach to me. So he oh, and no. everybody's following him. And so I'm looking at it coming at me. I'm like, are you got to be kidding me? And he comes over to give me a high five. And it's like, hey, good luck. Have fun. Let's have some fun out there. And I was just going like, uh, dude, I'm scrambled. Like, what? I just fully got my game. Yeah, big Tyrannosaur coming at you. He was a Goliath. <laughs> so, Those guys so are, funny. I mean, I was really fortunate to have, I had Bede, uh, Andy, Kelly, I wonder who else, Freddie for sure. And they were just, they were titans of it, man. Like, I think the mm. older guys on tour, they become so entrenched in what that life is. And they really actually... They're, they were larger than life to me because I was a stoked surf grom coming up and then having to kind of battle against going against your heroes. It's a cool it's a cool moment in time. I'm sure kids now are doing that with the guys, but it seems like the top guys are younger. Like it's almost like a new guard. Yeah, like you could be a rookie, but facing a world champ that's like a few years younger than you these days. How old is Italo? 25. Oh, you're up, dude. Is this how I do it right here? <laughs> you run out of time. You better get you better get moving. If it's not here, that looks sick. Oh man, Jim, dude, get the vert salad out, dude. You're pretty good at surfing. Wow. So those rights are good. They go for a long time. <laughs> that was the problem. That must be your wave. I can't like Kelly's. I feel every time Pat and I were in the event, we somehow had Kelly. You're or fired up. Kelly. Look at the paddle. You can back out there. 
I mean, I'm going against Kelly Slater, dude. Have you ever seen black and white? Like, come on. <laughs> yeah, right, walk us through the replay. All right. I will say that this is a this was something, and then this came in against Wilco a couple years later in an event. Is if it's weird and windy down the line, don't overcook your first turns. Like mm. that was oh. I set the first one up so that I could get big on that second one. That's yep. always a big thing because you want to come out of the gates heavy. But sometimes lowers sets up a little further down the line. Yeah, I mean, I think the timing on that one, you know, provided you so much opportunity, and that's probably that that local knowledge, right? Ah, oh, that board looks so good. Bam. It just fits the pocket so well. Now, I mean, really, on the backhand there, it's a it really is about getting vert, getting a good flow. I mean, I watched the way that Medina does it mm. or did it when those events were still on, and he. It's just so fun to watch because not only does he go vertical, I always felt like going against guys like him, I just didn't have that extra gear of Medina could throw a shove it. He could throw like that nose pick. And competitively, I, I always stuck to the fundamentals, which probably was like an ace bucking program where, you know, you might, if you stick it on a couple eights, majority of the time you might make that heat. But um, we definitely had a lot of fun out there. That's for sure. Here we go. Yellow jersey. Oh, yellow yellow glasses. jersey. There it is to go with the glasses. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Lethal run the swallowtail too. Big fan. Who's that? Carlos? Carlos Munoz. All right. Yeah, this is fun, Dave. Thanks for getting me in tuned on this. This is kind of lifting up my COVID 19. <laughs> Your quarantine spirits. This is great. The rear view rules. So, okay. So, what do you think I got on that wave? I need an 8 3. Um, geez. 8 5. So I got it on that wave. I don't know if I got it, dude. Do well, I? I? What did you get another? You won the eight. You, didn't, you get another one here in the last beater, three minutes. It might be. Oh no, I got it. Okay. Oh, it, it doesn't say what score it is. Fourteen nine three. Would have been around eight five then. That's cool. Eight four. Here goes Kelly. Inside right. Mm. Dude. No whammy. He doesn't need much though, right? He needs like a a mid score. So he probably, <laughs> you don't want that. I love Kelly. He always, like, he would do random stuff out there, too. Remember that year he got the barrel? It was somehow, mm. like, a le legitimate barrel. Yeah. Now, I remember Bruce got a barrel one year, too, and it, like, scored so high, but it was, like, a real shitty head dip, and you're just like, what the fuck? 1493. All right, so what are you thinking? You've got two minutes. You've got the lead. You know, oh, oh poor Dana. He's stressed. Thinking, more importantly, oh my, it's it's way more. Like he's looking for distractions. He's like, what? Anything, anything, but these last two minutes. He's totally watch looking up at uppers, going like, is that a set? <laughs> <laughs> so are you stressing? You like, oh, who's this guy? Oh, wait a second. Calling in the marshal. Is is that the marshal? This is what Pendleton you're gonna dude? see today at lowers. That's the guy. I just just telling water. you to get out. Oh, Go what? Pro. No. They Ooh, had there's a flock of them. Party. Posse. That's pretty fun. I was probably at this point, Dave, thinking that the next set's going to be pretty waked out after 15 gems. <laughs> <It's just laughs> right. past it. <laughs> You're stoked. You're waving back. Oh, here goes. Shark on the inside. Definitely still stressing if Kelly's standing up. Oh, he needs a seven. He needs something huge. Well, here we go. Oh. First step. Oh. I don't know if you would have got around that section. I don't know if the, poor Dane. Poor Dane, dude. He's losing years on his life. Do you see that? <laughs> He's just losing losing years of his life on this heat. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's I'll tell you that last minute when you're in a situation like that is the longest time has ever felt. I mean, this is round one, but sure. you gotta think about some of the guys who've sat through some finals and things have worked out and it's pretty, it's time really is a relative thing when you surf heats because sometimes you snap your fingers and it's gone and other times you literally remember every s literal second of it. Was there, I mean, you know, we talked about you didn't get your opportunity out there when you were a rookie and was winning round one against not only Wilco, but Kelly. Like, was there a bit of a weight that was lifted for you? Like, was did you feel validated? Like, you know, I am as good as these guys. Uh, you know, this feels great. Like, did it feel better than other heat wins, I guess is my question. I don't know. Like, I definitely don't remember. I don't remember how I felt here. I definitely remember the third at lowers 
which I believe, again, I don't know the exact year, but mm. that to me was the validation of like, wow, I can, you know, I think it probably was a brotherly thing, but at that time, Pat hadn't, Pat had been on tour since I fell off and hadn't gotten a semi. And then Got as it. a wild card, I was able to get the semi and, and those, that goes back to that brother rivalry, which was literally the only reason I was still competing at that time was to just still be able to do it with Pat. Um, so it was cool. Like it came back into the house and then that pushed Pat to get the third at Bell's, I'm sure. And, um, and obviously Pat still got more oomph in the tank. So did Kelly it, say anything to you after this heat? Did you feel a little fist bump or anything? He, Kelly is awesome, man. Like I, I really like as much as people go like Kelly's dudes does the mind games and stuff, but he's been so cool to Patrick, Dan and I, he's always come down to the Stokoramas. I think we had a Stokorama this year during the event and he still took the time to come down like after That's that so whole rad. heat. So, which again, I think he smoked me in round three. Right? Yeah, well, I was about to say, so So you win round one, you get to go straight to round three, and it was at that time when the format was like, you're probably going to run into the same people time and time again, hence the Fred, the Fred Potatia thing from 2010. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you lost to Kelly in round three, and I, I mean, I guess it happens, right? Well, it not even just happens. It's like in a situation like that, as a wild card or somebody coming up, you have nothing to lose. So you go out there, you try your hardest, and if it actually doesn't work out, it's a, just a rad experience. I definitely, I remember kicking out of all of these CT heats, just actually thankful because it's, you don't, a lot of times on the WQS you lose heats and there's a couple factors that are frustrating where it's bad conditions. Uh, it, just a crazy, crazy call that can go down or nobody sees it. And so you're kind of like on the CT, you, you, you don't have it as much because people are watching. So they're connected to it. The guys you're surfing against are your heroes. The waves are going to be good because the calls are that way. And, and so it is truly like a treat. Do you like that? Well, if so, subscribe over there and then watch more videos over there. And then tell us your favorite videos down there. It's a three-step process. Do them all now. Do you like that? Well, if so, Subscribe over there and then watch more videos over there. And then tell us your favorite videos down there. It's a three-step process. Do them all now.